Hello, everyone. This is Marina Ritsishina, and I want to welcome you uh, to the next episode of the podcast Clean Energy Talks. Today, we will talk about energy system planning with Maxim Semenyuk. Maxim is a sen- senior consultant, uh, energy market and strategy at DNB. Maxim has expertise in energy planning um, and energy markets economics and strategy. Uh, he coordinates a uh, large uh, prefeasibility and analytical and implementation projects along the energy uh, sector value chain. In this podcast, we will talk about the energy system planning uh, for reaching climate neutrality. Maxim, based on your experience, what are the general approaches for planning of energy system? Um, hello, Marina. Thank you for the invitation. Um, when we talk about energy system planning, um, in a general form, it is aimed at um, meeting the future energy demand in a certain country while uh, minimizing the cost of infrastructure and achieving certain strategic objectives, such as decarbonization, growth of the economy, or uh, security of supply. And uh, typically, uh, energy system planning consists of uh, five generic steps. Uh, where the first one is actually defining the strategic objectives. Uh, so each country may consider something else or may prioritize them differently. As I say, the typical ones are decarbonization, security of supply, affordability. And um, of course, in ideal world, we try to balance, but uh, normally there is some, some prioritization. So that's step one. Uh, once those objectives are defined, um, the planning entity is... Uh, working on the development of future energy scenarios. Um, The future energy scenarios are usually a mix of uh, forecasts based on uh, the current trends and uh, changes that are driven by the policies and that are uh, desired to be implemented. Um, So the future energy scenario is usually somewhere in between uh, the the forecast and the uh, desired end goal. So that's the second step. Uh, Once scenarios are identified, uh, the planning entities are trying to assess uh, the needs, uh, which means uh, look at the gaps between where the energy system is today and where we would like it to be based on the scenarios that we are considering. Um, that can mean that a new infrastructure needs to be developed or, um, for example, transmission dis- infrastructure for electricity or gas. It can mean uh, new supply uh, capacities need to be developed, uh, maybe certain demand measures need to be introduced, uh, regulatory measures, and so on. So this, that, that's the third step, identification of the, third, uh, of the system needs. And, and uh, after that is done, uh, step number four is uh, identification of potential solutions. So let's imagine we identified a system need uh, to build a transmission corridor for electricity from point A to point B. Uh, how would we do it? And, and there are multiple technologies that are available. Normally, there are multiple um, uh, types of ownership or there are multiple ways to finance that. So all of those uh, parameters are analyzed together and uh, several options for how to meet the system needs are identified. And in the last step, uh, those options are assessed and the preferred one is selected. At this point, we normally say that the... Uh, system planning is uh, finalized and everything thereafter is really delivery and implementation. So that's the generic process that is in place today. It sounds uh, simple. At the same time, it's look like very challenging. Are there any differences uh, between countries, so for instance, depending on region or available resources? Uh, definitely. And... Um... I mostly work in across Europe, so for me it's it's easier to to give examples uh, based on the uh, differences in this region. Uh, and of course, if if we uh, if we were able to uh, get in one room uh, energy ministers from multiple European countries, we would see how economic potential, uh, geopolitics, uh, natural and uh, infrastructure resources, how they affect the energy system planning in each country. And just to give you a few examples, um, if we think about uh, Baltic region, um, a few 
characteristics that come to my mind are a uh, huge biomass resource, um, well-developed um, refinery infrastructure, uh, access to the sea, um, proximity to Russia. Uh, those factors, and there are many, many more, but these are the ones that are considered to be most important for that region. Those factors mean that the energy system planning in this region is really focused on energy dependency and self-sufficiency. It is focused on integration into uh, regional electricity uh, and gas transmission networks. Um, they try to capitalize on the uh, biomass potential, offshore wind potential that they have. And, and all of the subsequent steps in the energy planning are determined by these starting points. If we look, for example, the Nordics, we have a different picture there. We have uh, large hydro resources. We have experience with nuclear. We have cold climate. Um, and uh, those combined, they make the region very attractive for data center industry, for example. And data center industry usually means high electricity consumption. So uh, energy system planets in Nordics, uh, they take those points as the starting ones, and then they... Uh, develop the system accordingly. Um, maybe the last example, if we look at Iberia, so uh, Spain, Portugal, um, the picture is completely different. Uh, the first obvious thing that comes to mind is huge solar potential. We know that the production uh, profile of solar plants is, is very uneven. So there are many, many hours with oversupply uh, where the electricity is really, really cheap. And uh, the countries are challenged with how to integrate this oversupply. So they are looking at um, system coupling solutions through the conversion of electricity into hydrogen, for example. So that's just a few examples that show uh, how regional differences affect the energy system planning. When you mentioned the Baltic region, I thought that maybe uh, there should be questions connected with the security of supply, especially in this region. Can energy system plan and solve uh, the security supply problems in the EU? Uh, the short answer is uh, yes, we hope so. Um, it is, in fact, one of the objectives. As, as I say, typically security of supply is, is uh, somewhere high up on, on the list of strategic objectives for any country. And especially now, it's one of the top priorities for European countries. Uh, which are characterized by very energy intensive economies and by high uh, standards of living, which means there is expectation from the society to have uninterrupted energy supply. And um, if we think of uh, how energy system planning approaches, this aspect is usually uh, by looking at two time scales. One is the short term uh, time scale and long term time scale. In the short term, the main challenge is um, electrification and uh, what comes with that is a challenge of ensuring that the system is balanced, which means that the generation and demand are organically responding to each other's changes. And, and so in the past, we used to talk about generation being responsive. Now we also say that demand should be responsive to the market signals. And, and this is the main um, problem that is uh, in the minds of energy system planner if we talk about short scale. If we look at the longer term, um, energy experts typically talk about uh, adequacy and adequacy is um, a measure of the ability of the system to cover the energy demand at any point in the year. Um, so in other words, uh, adequacy explains or uh, shows whether the country or region has enough uh, energy and whether there are no moments when there is a shortage. And uh, to solve the issue of adequacy, uh, countries usually uh, invest in uh, supply infrastructure. They uh, make sure that they have sufficient reserves uh, by introducing certain market measures or by cooperating on the regional level and thereby sharing some of the uh, reserves. So in general, uh, yes, I say nowadays, the topic of security of supply deserves lots of attention and um, it is uh, one of the top priorities for energy system planners. In the future energy system, um, we expect a lot of renewables and uh, we need also a lot of balancing capacity uh, for them. Uh, batteries or hydrogen power plant? What is the best option for the energy system? 
It's an interesting question and uh, one can probably make a lecture about it and still didn't, do not conclude anything. Um, usually why, why we put those two technologies together is because uh, indeed they both serve as a uh, mean of storing energy, uh, but at the same time, they are very different. Uh, batteries, they work with electricity. So they take electricity from the grid, they store it and then they release it back. Uh, they typically have capacity of uh, a few hours uh, but they can be stacked, which allows to achieve very high power ratings of hundreds of megawatts. It's a very mature technology. It's uh, broadly deployed across all European markets and um, batteries are really good for uh, short-term electricity system balancing. So they are very complementary to uh, renewables. Uh, Secondly, they provide support to grid operators in case of faults. Um, batteries have shown uh, their ability to quickly ramp up or reduce their uh, the injection or the outtake from the grid and in this way maintaining the frequency. And uh, also in certain markets, they can be used for market arbitrage uh, because of their high round trip, round trip efficiency. They're, they're perfect for that. Uh, if we look at hydrogen, uh, while it can be used for storage, it's uh, fundamentally different because hydrogen implies conversion from electricity, uh, from electrons to molecules. Uh, so we're not just storing energy, but we are changing the type of commodity. And as of today, uh, storing hydrogen with the goal of then converting it back to electricity is not economically efficient uh, because there were high conversion losses and uh, Electrolyzing technologies is not very mature, um, but there are other reasons why why countries are uh, investing in hydrogen projects, and that's because there are many other applications where where where, uh, where hydrogen can be useful. And you may think of uh, conversion to ammonia for fertilizer production, or you may think of uh, e-fuel production. Uh, so there are many other industries where where hydrogen has uh, high value, and uh, therefore. In my mind, we, we should always um, sort of consider that um, hydrogen is, is much more than just a means of storing energy as opposed to batteries. Thank you for your opinion about this uh, topic uh, because uh, hydrogen power plant is a um, very important question, especially in Germany. Uh, and the last question, uh, could you give some advice to experts who are involved in energy system planning? What I see based based on the experience from from the projects where I uh, worked, uh, which were concerned with energy system planning, uh, what helped us to produce a good energy system plan, whatever that means. Uh, but what what I find to be important is to have a clear uh, definition of strategic objectives. So step one uh, in that five step process that I described is is really really important uh, because what I saw is that we were regularly returning back uh, to validate whether our proposed solutions, whether our scenarios, whether all of the analysis that we're doing, whether it corresponds to the strategic objectives that we defined in the very beginning. So making them clear, transparent, and precise is important. Um, the energy systems of, of countries today are uh, well interconnected, and therefore it's um, crucial to consider not only domestic energy context, uh, but also uh, that of the broader region. Uh, there are many exchanges, both in, in terms of electricity and gas and other commodities uh, between the countries. And therefore, when planning your own energy system, it is important to maintain dialogue with, with your counterparts and uh, taking into account which developments we see across the border. And finally, um, something that um, becomes more and more important, uh, especially with electrification and especially with decarbonization, is uh, modeling techniques. And why it is important is because um, the uh, generation profile or, or the, the energy supply profile becomes very uh, unpredictable. unpredictable. It becomes very weather dependent. And therefore, uh, having robust modeling tools is um, a must for energy system planning um, 
today. Thank you very much uh, for your participation and for this advice uh, uh, to about energy uh, system planning. You're welcome, my pleasure.